Yo, if you guys want to learn how to turn this old crusty Dell computer to something like this, then stick around. Now uh, you guys see the computer and before we get into the steps, please go down below and drop a like on this video. I want to try to reach 100 likes on the video and if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content like this. All right, hopping right into the tutorial. First step you want to do is obviously take apart the PC that you're transferring into your newer case. There's screws on the side panel normally. Mine didn't come with screws. And then you just gotta start disassembling the motherboard. Take this awesome screwdriver. I'll have links to it down below. Of course you can use any other screwdriver, but this one's electric and magnetic, so it's pretty sick. So you just start by taking out all these screws and then unplug the power supply cables from the motherboard. and all the other cables from the motherboard. And then turn the system around. Then you undo these four screws up top, holding in the power supply. Nice and easy with the electric screwdriver. And then just slide out your power supply. Now you can either use this power supply that's going into your system, but I'm not going to because the graphics card we're putting in has two six pin PCIe connectors and this wouldn't support it. You can just undo all the screws for the motherboard that are holding it in. And then when you get all the screws undone, the motherboard should slide out. Be careful with it. You know, you don't want to break it or anything. And you can just set it right there. And next, if your pre-built system did come with a hard drive or any drive, go ahead and take that out right now. And detach it from the drive cage as well. And just take all your SATA data cables out so you have some extras. And that's all you need from the build. And then you grab the case you're going to be case swapping into. You can use any case you want, but this is one I saw on Amazon. I will have it linked down below as well as all the other parts I use that I got off of Amazon. And then also a quick tip, when you're disassembling systems and you need screws, take all the screws out of the system that you're not gonna be using, like that case we just put on the floor because we're not gonna be using it. And we have all these spare screws here for other PC builds. And we can use it for this one if your case doesn't come with one, if it's used. As you can see, this case looks pretty slick. It looks like it, oh yeah, I like that. It has a little door. That's magnetic, no screws needed, that's awesome. But before we put the motherboard into the case, I like to give the parts a quick cleaning with just an air duster and reapply the thermal paste on the CPU. So to do that, you just undo these four screws on the cooler here. And then you just take a rag and some rubbing alcohol and then clean the old thermal paste off. And then just put a pea sized amount of thermal paste in the middle of your CPU. That'll do. And then just put your CPU cooler back on. Take your air duster and then hit the parts with a quick dust. Don't forget to grab your IO shield from the older case. Now you can get ready to transfer the motherboard to the new case. And usually, in the back of these cases, they have an accessories box, and that's where you can access all your screws. They have these thumb screws on there, but damn, I guess I'm just weak as because I can't get them with my thumbs. Mine came in a bag instead of a box, but same thing. Then you take your front panel off. This one's a door, pretty awesome. Also slides off, that's so amazing. Then honestly, I really like that feature. Then if you take a look at your motherboard, you can see the screw holes right there. One, two, three, four, five and six so that's where your motherboard needs to have the standoffs so just make sure the standoffs are in the right place which are those little things these black screws you got to make sure there's a screw in each spot where the motherboard goes and then take your io shield and put this thing in the back just push it into place sometimes they're a pain unless i just suck at building computers but i can never get them in first try they always go in some weird way now that all your standoffs are into place, you can put in your motherboard. 
Normally you want to do this with your PC laying down on its side, on its back, but I'm just doing this so you guys can see. And then all those screw points, obviously, you just got to screw it in. Now that you got your motherboard installed, the next step is the power supply. We're using this Antec 450 watt power supply. Slide it in from the back. It's the best. That's what she said. <laughs> it also has four screw points and you screw those down using these bigger screws. And then you want to take all your front panel connectors, route them to the front of the case and plug them in. So one problem you may run into while swapping these older OEM PCs into newer cases like this, they do not support USB 3.0. So you need to get one of these headers. You can get them off Amazon or eBay. Amazon's obviously way quicker with prime shipping, but it's a normal USB 3.0 header to a USB 2.0 header. And then while plugging in these HD audio and USB headers, they only go in one way. So don't force it if it's not going in. Last thing is the front panel header. So with these, that's the one thing that's most likely proprietary. And I'll throw a diagram up for this one up on screen right now. And now you can plug in your motherboard cables. So your 24 pin obviously goes in this big white one. It's not always white, but it's the biggest one, 24 pins. And that also goes in one way. There's a clip on each side. And then for your CPU power, which is this top one here, also goes in one way, there's a clip. You'll fill it clip into place. We're halfway done. The next step is installing your drives. So if your computer came with a hard drive or any drive, you want to install it now. But for my case, I'm not going to be using this hard drive because we want it to be nice and snappy. So we're going to be using an SSD, but it's the same thing if you want to install an SSD or a hard drive. Again, I'll leave some good choices to some budget SSDs on Amazon down below. First thing you need is a SATA data cable. You should have got some with your computer that you're swapping. I told you guys to take them out of the case. You'll plug this end into the motherboard and then this end into, and then this end, as I said, goes into this spot right there. And then you take this one. This one's called the SATA power cable. It's what provides power to the SSD. So you have your SATA power cable and your SATA data cable. And then the hard drive cage down here, it's removable with a couple screws down at the bottom. So you want to remove that to mount your SSD to it. Just like that. The screw holes poke through and you can screw it in with the provided screws in the accessories bag or box. Also, you want to plug in your case fans. In my case, it came with a huge ARGB fan in the front of the case and it's Molex powered. So you take this Molex cable here. These are fairly old, no one likes them anymore, but I don't know why we're still using them, but we do. So you just plug it in to the power supply. Your last and final step is the GPU now, other than the cable management. So you want to route the PCIe cables to the front of the case and then grab your GPU. So I know the GPU market is crazy right now, so just use any GPU you can get your hands on. But in my case, I'm using an R9-270X that I got at a local pawn shop. So check your local pawn shops. I got this for either $40 or $50, I can't remember. The graphics card goes into this right here, the PCIe X lane. Then you want to remove these two PCIe brackets. One awesome thing about this budget case here it supports vertical GPU mounting, which is awesome to see. I'm loving this case. Anyways, just line up your GPU and then you can just snap it right into place. You'll hear a click. The PCIe cables go right in there. So this one, as I was saying, has two PCIe six pin connectors. But that Antec power supply that I got on a killer seal in my used market for $10, it only has one PCIe connector, but I have a fix for that. The SATA power to six pin connectors. So you just plug this in like you did your hard drive into the power supply and then this goes into your GPU. I'll leave a link down below. So now your build is done besides cable management, but I'm going to do that off camera. So you can slide on your front panel and do the best thing of any PC build. What's the best thing you may ask? The peel. Give it a listen. Bam! That one had a little squeak to it. Awesome. Let's see if it turns on. First try. Let's go. Ooh, hoo, hoo. let's go. We built it correctly. Drop a like for it turning on for the first try. Anyways, I'm gonna do the cable management and then we'll see how this bad boy performs.
Quick disclaimer, you need to plug a fan into the rear fan header or you'll get an press F1 error on boot up. So you can either use the included fan in the old case or just a 120 millimeter fan. Damn. <laughs> I nearly just died on this water. Sorry about that one. I almost died drinking that water. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really had a good time case swapping this PC. I didn't run into any problems while doing it other than the F1 problem I mentioned. It stays fairly quiet and fairly cool while playing games. I'll give you a quick sound test right now. And also any of the parts I use in this PC build like the case, uh, the SSD, and those little adapters I use, it will be linked below. But anything else, it was a local deal, and you can just search up eBay for it. But with all that said, if you guys watched to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. Let me know down below if you did. Anyways, drop a like. Let's try to reach that like goal, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.